Only 2% of our large lakes are in good health and just 45% of our rivers are safe enough to swim in. They are painful realities in a new report from the Ministry of Environment. So is it too late to turn it around? Marnie Prickett is a freshwater science and public policy research fellow in the Department of Public Health at Otago University. That is quite an intro. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, morning. Here this morning. Um, this report, this latest report, is really damning, isn't it? What struck you as the worst of its findings? I think that the most, um, the strongest thing about it, it didn't actually tell us anything that we didn't know before. It was kind of a summary report of um, information that had been that had already been out there, and actually some of it, um, it was criticised a little bit for the monitoring data being a bit out of date. Yeah. But um, I think for me, the most striking thing is when you read those all together, you realise that um, all those things interact, and when our environment is degrading, uh, that gets amplified by things like climate change, um, and when those things are happening, that inevitably has an effect on our on the health and well-being of our communities. So I think it's kind of it's greater than the sum of its parts, if you like. Yeah, and it does seem to be, I think, one thing that uh, would u unite New Zealanders, you know, across the political spectrum, is wanting our um, waterways, our rivers and our lakes to be clean, to be able to use them in the, you know, in, in, for recreation or for fishing, whatever. Mm. So why can't we turn that sentiment into real action? Do you think? Yeah, well, I mean, I think that I think we've just seen a little bit of it um, with the interviews with both the government and um, the leader of the opposition this morning. I don't, I didn't hear anything really about the quality of the environment or even climate change. You know, these are. I, I'm not seeing politicians take it seriously enough, quite frankly. I think that they, they haven't engaged in this report. They're barely engaging um, meaningfully in climate change. And, and so, you know, Christopher Luxon this morning talked about problem definition. But, well, they're not getting a handle on the problem. It's far more serious than they realise. And it's actually starting to impact people's health and well-being in a real way, um, in a real sort of tangible mm. right now way in terms of people's drinking water and things like what we saw in, have look, in, in Hawke's Bay recently. You know, that's, that, those are decisions about poor land use coupled with climate change hitting the, the health of our environment and the health of our people. It must be incredibly frustrating for you. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Yep. Um, 66% percent of freshwater native bird species are either threatened with extinction or risk of becoming threatened. Another 48% uh, of our rivers are now inaccessible to migratory fish. 45% of our rivers are unsafe to swim in. These mm. are all, this is all um, out of the report. These, this, it's sort of dispiriting, isn't it? Um, it can make people feel like giving up, but individuals can make a difference. Absolutely. I think individuals can make a difference. And I think also we need to think about this as a collective problem because it's, we can't just, um, you know, all do something slightly different and, um, and get that outcome. We need to organise together. Uh, so we're working together so our actions are strategic. And something that, um, you know, right now it, it, there are things that central government is doing and can do better and obviously recognising climate change and, and the nature of, of the state of our environment is an important one. Mm. But actually there's a shift in, in where some of the decision making is now and regional councils are a really central part of the decision making about fresh water and, and its quality right now. Mm -hmm. They have to, by the end of 2024, they have to produce regional plans um, which are consistent with the new policy that the um, government came out with a couple of years ago. Um, and so that's where individuals can make a real difference if they get engaged in that in their local regions, yeah, have their voice heard there. Right. And so it is election year for those who care about uh, clean lakes and swimmable rivers. Um, just very quickly, what should they be looking for from their parties? I think that one of the things is is vision for where, how are we, where are we going as a country? What do we want our landscapes to look like? Because it really is a landscape scale problem. You can't break it down into little bits and pieces. You have to look at it at the landscape. So we need our landscape to look to be healthier, and that's going to be that requires a, a joined up vision. And I'm not hearing that from either parties at the moment. Uh, and then I think also from a public health perspective, there needs to be a real focus on um, enforcement and implementation of policy because actually we've had some decent policies in the past but they've just got, gotten lost because there hasn't been that determination and political will to make sure that they actually happen. Well, it's, we will be keeping our eyes on it. I know you will be too. Thank you so much for joining us Thanks here this morning.